let go of the weight of the past, forgive. It's not easy to forgive those who have hurt or wronged us. In your life, people are going to be unkind, impolite, and rude. Some of you have been mistreated, abused, abandoned, or gossiped by. Some things in your life should not have been said or happened, but they were said and it did happen. We have a tendency to recall the undesirable deeds of others that have affected us and made us feel discouraged and mad. To hold a grudge is to allow ourselves to dwell on anger, bitterness, and resentment, or other negative feelings for a prolonged time after someone has hurt us or after we've perceived wrongdoing. When we've been badly hurt, it's a common response to withhold forgiveness from the person who has done us wrong. We want to punish the person who has wronged us so horribly and we want to be angry with them forever. We've all been wronged at some point in our lives. And if we're being honest, we've also wronged others too. Everybody will be faced with the question, how can I ever forgive this person for doing this? However, the Bible is very clear on the subject of forgiveness. We are expected to forgive without exception. Even those who have not come to us seeking for forgiveness, those who have not said sorry, or who have shown no signs for a sorry heart. Yes, we must also forgive them too. As we serve the Lord, forgiveness is a priority and it has no boundaries. As Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, but when you are praying, First, forgive anyone you are holding a grudge again so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. The idea is that forgiving others as well as checking your heart and attitude towards others should be among the first things you do in your prayer life. Forgiveness must be prioritized. God forgives our sins constantly, so why shouldn't we do the same? Colossians 3.13 says, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Giving God all of your hurt, pain, and sadness is what biblical forgiveness also entails. The forgiveness we have received from God is something that we should render to others as well. Forgiveness is a purposeful decision to release our anger and place our faith in God to restore our hearts. Our forgiveness for others should have no bounds. True forgiveness allows us to heal and find peace in Christ as well as learn from the circumstance and become wiser in the future. The things springing in your mind may be, but you don't know what they did. If you did, you'd understand why I can't forgive them. And I'd be lying to you if I say that the story in Matthew 18, 21 to 22 is one of the most difficult things to do. Bible says, then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. You were once forgiven, forgiven of far more than anyone could ever do to you. God has forgiven our sins and wiped away our debt, which we would have never paid on our own. And it wasn't a minor offense. We had sinned against and done wrong against a holy and perfect God. Consider the price God paid in order to forgive you of your debt. He gave his one and only son's life as a sacrifice. While Jesus was being put on trial, there was a notorious sinner next to him. His name was Barabbas, a sinner, a murderer, and an undeserving man. And that Barabbas was us, angry, worldly, murderers, and sinners. But all of our sins were laid on him, and he bore it all willingly. And when he was on that cross, you were on his mind. And it's no accident that Barabbas means son of the Father. So put to heart what has been done to you. How can we refuse to forgive others when God has forgiven so much of us? Ephesians 4, 31 to 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Forgiveness affects the relationship with our Heavenly Father. The very fact that you are holding a grudge against someone is disobedience to God's will for your life. Your relationship with that person and with God will be negatively affected as long as you hold on to that grudge. Your relationship with others has an impact on your relationship with God. Matthew 6, 14 to 15 says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. We shall be able to forgive with the help of prayer, biblical direction, and the Holy Spirit. We aspire to be more like Jesus as we walk with him. He gave his life for each of us and forgave us the people who have wronged him so much. Forgiving others is one more way we can grow in our journey as believers. 
The forgiveness of the Father frees us from condemnation. And if we forgive someone and run to Jesus, we become free from the past and from hurts. Unforgiveness arouses sinful feelings in our hearts against those who have done something to us. When we forgive, we are free from these evil thoughts. With a free mind, it's easier to approach God and easier to approach people. Christ's life and his forgiveness flows through our lives and into the lives of those around us.